In this video, I'm going to be talking about project scheduling and the role it plays on construction projects. Anybody who works in the construction sector understands that time matters. Projects are driven by deadlines, are driven by schedules. So that's why I want to talk all about construction project scheduling and specifically the role time plays in successful project delivery. We're going to look at the specific applications of project scheduling, the project management principles, and how they play out on construction projects. We'll talk about why scheduling matters, the different types of construction project schedules, the development of the schedule, and then finally, during the delivery phase, the implementation, monitoring, and control of the schedule. Scheduling is the tools and processes we use to ensure the project finishes on time. So why does scheduling matter? Why does it matter in the construction sector? Well, the first reason, if you're a contractor and you're tendering for new work, then if you can show you can finish your projects faster than your competitors, and you're going to increase your chances of winning new work. If you can show that you can finish a project 50% faster than your competitors, even if you're doing it at the same price, clients are going to value this. So you're going to increase your chances of winning the project. The second reason is scheduling is going to reduce the duration of the overall project, which is going to reduce your indirect costs. So your indirect costs are things like your staff salaries, project overhead, security, temporary fencing, these sorts of ongoing recurring costs that you incur depending on the duration of the project. So if you can finish the project faster, you can reduce the overall project duration. You're going to be paying less in project manager salaries. You're going to hire toilets and temporary offices for less time. So you're actually going to reduce your indirect cost. Efficient scheduling and effective scheduling is also going to reduce your direct costs. So the direct costs are the costs of doing the actual construction works, pouring concrete, standing structural steel. If you can schedule and manage the works better, you're going to be coordinating all of the different activities more effectively, which is going to reduce cost increases like delays, clashes between different work groups. So if you can schedule the works better, you'll also reduce your direct costs. So scheduling is going to have a significant impact on your project costs. In addition to de decreasing the costs of doing the works, Construction contracts almost always have delay penalties known as liquidated damage. If you're delayed in finishing the project completion date, you'll typically get charged a set amount per day. On large construction projects, you might get charged ten dollars to $20,000 a day for every single day you're late in finishing a project. Therefore, if we can use scheduling to ensure the project finishes on time, then we're going to avoid any of these delayed penalties, which is also going to save us money. So we're going to reduce any risk and liability. And then finally, scheduling is also going to increase our stakeholder satisfaction. So our client, key stakeholders impacted by the project want to know what's happening. They want to know how progress is tracking, when certain key activities are going to occur, and when we're going to meet important milestone. The schedule is one of the best tools we can use to communicate progress to our stakeholders and demonstrate how the project is progressing when key activities are happening and maintaining a relevant and up-to-date schedule that we communicate with them in the right format in a simplified version is going to keep them happy and confident in our progress. Scheduling is also going to help us manage our construction contracts. So we spoke about avoiding liquidated damages in addition to this, construction contracts specify that contractors, when completing the works, need to maintain an up-to-date and relevant construction program that will typically have to submit to our client at regular intervals. In addition to this, when the client delays us, when they fail to give us access to site, when they fail to give us up-to-date drawings, we can also use the schedule to demonstrate extension of time claims and claim additional time and money, which is going to help us manage our contractual risks and ensure we're entitled to our claim. The schedule is also an incredibly useful contract management tool. There's a famous quote by Dwight D. Eisenhower that goes, plans are useless, but planning is indispensable. Now, to me, what this quote means is that the act of creating a plan thinking through the methodology, building a schedule, listing out all activities, and estimating duration, and sequencing them, it forces you to go through this process of planning in detail and understanding 
how you're going to deliver the project. Yes, there are some significant benefits like we've discussed through scheduling, but even the act of planning and creating a schedule is such an invaluable process to go, you're going to go through. It's going to help you pick up so many issues. You're going to indirectly manage all these different risks and think through all these different events and contingency plans. And going through this structured planning process is going to have such a significant beneficial carry on effect on the delivery of the project. Now let's look at the different types of schedules used on construction projects. So first off, we've got our master project schedule, which encompasses the entire project scope. So this will cover the design, access to site, mobilization, early works, foundations, construction, handover to commissioning and final occupancy. It covers the end to end delivery of the entire project scope and every activity. This is also the program that the client will see when we're regularly maintaining it and developing. We've also got short range programs. So short range programs at three to six will look week look aheads that are used by construction teams to schedule, coordinate and manage the works on site. These are typically much more detailed the master project schedules. And while the master project schedule might be built in something like Primavera P6 or Microsoft Project, the short range programs are typically done on whiteboards or even simple tables in Microsoft Excel. In addition to that, we'll have a series of function or discipline programs. So we might have a procurement schedule that lists out all the different packages we need when we need to award the packages. Or we might have something like a design schedule, which nominates when all the different design review dates are and when our different design packages will get to IFC. And finally, when we've got subcontractors and vendors, we'll have they'll have their own schedules. So they'll have their own contract program for whatever scope they're specifically de delivering in the same way as a contractor. We have to maintain the master project schedule. Our subcontractors and vendors will also have to maintain schedules relevant to their scope. So all these different schedules work together in tandem. They all feed up into the master project schedule and they're used for different specific roles to cover different scopes and different levels of detail. These different project schedules vary along four main domains. So we've got the scope. So whether a project covers the entire scope, like the master project schedule, or it covers a specific discipline or activity like the design schedule. The time frame or time slice of the project they're looking for. So a three week look ahead obviously covers the next the activities planned for the next three weeks. While the master project schedule is going to cover the entire project duration. So the project schedule is very based on the time horizon, the level of detail. So there's a term in scheduling which refer to schedule levels, which when we're talking about a work breakdown structure, we call this the hierarchy, but they'll cover different levels of detail. So master project schedule might be a level one to three schedule, while a short range program might be a level five and six schedule. And then also the purpose. So the master project schedule the purpose is going to be coordinate the overall project, estimate the total project duration, and to keep our client informed. While the short range programs are all gonna be about site coordination and coordinating different disciplines working on site. So these are the four domains with which these schedules vary. On a construction project, the different schedule levels will refer to different typical schedules. So we've got say our level one, which is the master project schedule. Then level two, we might break it down by package and area. Then level three, we'll have our target programs and key activities for each of these different packages. So if we start with total project scope, then we might have an earthworks program. And then the earthworks is broken down into several key activities like clearing and grading, bulk earthworks, detailed drain. Then under these levels, so these maybe level one to three is what the master project schedule covers. And then under these levels, we've got schedules that the site construction teams use to manage the work. So they might have a two to six month program, which then gets broken down into a short range, three week look ahead, and then a daily plan. And as you're going through and iterating, reducing the time horizon, we use progressive elaboration to add more and more detail to plan every single thing in detail that we need to plan. So obviously six months from now, we don't need to know exactly what we're doing on a specific day. However, tomorrow we need to know exactly what's happening. So that's why we have a daily plan. So you can see as we go down in the schedule levels, we add more detail using progressive elaboration. Now that we understand why scheduling is important in construction projects and the different types of schedules used. Next question is, 
how do we schedule on construction projects? Well, the PMBOK has two core functions, developing in the planning phase and then monitoring and controlling during the ex execution. Now, I believe there's a third function to scheduling, implementation. A plan has no value unless we follow it. PMBOK refers to this as project integration management, which is directing and managing project work. Now, I think it's an integral part of scheduling, but whether you call it project integration or scheduling, it really doesn't matter. So schedule development is creating the schedule, then we need to implement the schedule, we need to follow the plan that we've created. If we don't follow it, it's not worth anything. We need to monitor and control performance. We need to compare our baseline schedule, the plan of what we thought we were gonna do, to what we're actually doing in practice. Schedule development, so this is where we create an accurate, realistic, and achievable project schedule. So there's a couple of core components to this. The first one is accurate. We need to create a plan of what we're actually proposing to be doing. This plan needs to reflect what we can and will do in reality. It also needs to be realistic and achievable. So often when we're planning projects, we get ambitious. We think we're going to be able to do all this extra work. We're going to, be able to mitigate all these delays. And we come up with this compressed time frame, considering only the known knowns and the known unknowns. We don't consider the unknown unknowns. Projects always have changed. They always have issues come up. So we don't properly consider all the unknown unknowns that are going to occur. And we underestimate total project duration because we're not factoring in all the unknown things that could happen. Another key thing to be aware of when you're developing a schedule, and I love this quote, that it's better to be roughly correct than in precisely wrong. So often when people build schedules, they add in excruciating detail. They add in thousands of different activities with detailed linkages. They do detailed resource curves and they go into this extensive level of detail but then you look at the overall project schedule and it doesn't make sense because they haven't considered the bigger picture the best planners i see start high level they start with a really broad outline of the project scope they put together a very high level schedule with the key activities they understand the critical path and then as more information becomes aware they add more detail but they only add sufficient detail necessary to build the schedule. They don't go into unnecessary levels of detail that aren't going to add any value. So when you're building a schedule, keep at the forefront of your mind that it's better to be roughly correct than precisely wrong. When you're building a schedule, start high level, outline the scope, the time frames, the constraints and key activities based on the information you have. Then during whether you're working on a tender or whether you're working on a pre-construction phase, building a schedule, more information will become available as you're building a schedule. So collect the key information in that detail and you want to optimize and validate the schedule. You want to make sure you're not breaching any constraints like the overall project duration. You want to get feedback from stakeholders. You want to engage with different experts in your team who understand how to deliver the project. You want to get all of their feedback and optimize the critical path. So the critical path, the sequence of tasks that if delayed, delayed project completion, that's where your time and attention should be when you're creating the schedule. And then review it with people and you're gonna go through lots of different iterations. In practice, when we look at the PMBOK, they talk about a very structured approach for building a schedule. So create the activity list, put the activities in sequence and estimate durations. In practice, all of these steps are going to be happening in parallel and you're constantly gonna be iterating through this cycle. Then the next step, as I've already said, is to put the plan in action. A plan has no value unless we do something with it. You can spend all this time building an amazing schedule, but then when the project starts, if we throw it in the bin, never look at it, then the plan has no value. The plan should be the driving force for how we're making decisions, for what we're referring back to to understand the sequence with which we build the job. So key here is we need to take the plan and put it into action. In practice, when you're implementing a construction project schedule, you'll take master schedule, you'll read, analyze, and understand the overall project sequence and the key milestones that you're working toward. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna decompose the schedule into a lower level short range program or look ahead. So we're planning for the next three months. We might turn this into a three month schedule. We're gonna add a lot more detail to reflect exactly what we need to do. We're gonna focus on 
concept called pool planning. So pool planning is rather than building a schedule going from the first activity to the last, we'll start at the last activity and work backwards and constantly be asking ourselves this prompt. For the next activity to occur, what needs to be in place to allow for it to happen? So if we're pouring a concrete foundation, we'll need design drawings. We'll need a contractor to place the concrete. We'll need the foundation to be excavated. We'll need a surveyor to have marked out the limits. We'll need our former design approved. So we we'll use this prompt of pool planning, working back from a milestone. And I find that to be the most useful way to consider everything that needs to be in place to complete the activity. Then once we've worked it, we've created our detailed schedule, we've elaborated on the master project schedule, then we need to communicate this plan to the people who will actually be doing the work, make them aware of it, make sure they understand the dates and book in any resources we need to ensure we meet this short range program. Then we need to monitor and control performance. So we want to ensure that the planned performance with our schedule baseline matches the actual performance. We've developed a schedule, we've put the plan into action. We now need to monitor and control how well we're following the plan and deal with any changes or issues when they arrive. To do this in practice, we'll need to set up some sort of earned value management system. So we've tracked progress, we'll track meters of cable installed, the number of hours we've spent per task, and then for each task in the master project schedule, We'll track percentage complete, the number of resources we've allocated to it, and how we're going completing certain milestones. We'll compare this to the plan and we'll get a good idea of how we're tracking against our schedule by baseline. So earned value management, spoken about separately. It's a comprehensive project management tool you can use to quantify and measure schedule and cost performance. And we'll use earned value management to track and monitor progress. Then as we're going through completing activities, we want to update the master schedule. We want to keep the master schedule relevant so it can continues to be a document we can refer to to manage progress. And then when changes do occur, we should go through a proper change control process, assess their impact on the schedule, update the schedule, keep the schedule relevant. And if we're entitled to additional time or money, make sure we're putting in contractual claims. And that is construction project scheduling, develop a schedule, we implement the schedule, and we monitor and control performance. And we use this to ensure the project finishes on time.